So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to stabilize hyperlapse footage, footage that has you going around the subject. The problem with plugins is that it's hard to track a rotating point of interest. So you might have to stabilize your hyperlapse pictures manually. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is select all your pictures, drag them into the timeline. So my end product is gonna be in 25P. So I'll set it to 25 and select OK. So the very first step is you want to pin a, a point of reference to the screen. So you can go to View, Show Horizon, and we're going to select a subject on the statue and pin it to this cross point here in the center. So the second step is to make all your images one frame long. To do this, select all your images, right click, go to change duration. And then over here, this is where you can change the duration of an image or whatever. So right now they're nine seconds. So hit one, that'll tell the program to make every image one frame long. So hit enter, shift Z to view your entire project. So now, if we zoom in, we can see that each frame is one image. So now we can start to actually stabilize this. Obviously, you know what a hyperlapse is if you're on this video. But what I'm trying to do here is to remove the, the moving center point on the image. We want to tag it to that cross point here. So that'll be the first pass. And then we're going to go back to the start and zoom out and change the rotational part of the stabilization because each frame here kind of rotates a half degree. So anyway, let's start with the position. So the first step is to zoom in. So now, as I scrub through this, you can see that the center point is a little bit off of this medallion here on the bird's chest. So what we want to do is we want to tag this yellow center point to the very center of that middle medallion is what I was aiming for. So what we want to do is tag this to this. So I'm going to zoom in to 600. I'm gonna hold Shift T, and that's a command that will bring up your transform tool. And we're just going to drag the center of that medallion to the center point of this cross point. Okay, hit enter. Now we can go to the next image here, and the shortcut to that is Command, right arrow, right arrow, go to the next one. So same thing, we're on the second image. So Shift T, so transform, we're just gonna move the position to the center of his medallion here. Hit enter, command right arrow, goes to the next image. Shift T, transform, move this to the center. Hit enter, command right arrow. Again, goes to the next slide. Now shift T, turns that image to the transform tool. Now we can drag it to the center of his medallion in the middle here. I'm gonna fast forward until the middle of this and I'll show you a before and after just with the position stabilization. Is after you're done an image and you go to the next one, command right arrow and command left to go back and forth to make sure your center point is really centered because if you don't go back and check the last one, your images are gonna be centered slightly different. It's a compound effect, so by the end of it, you might be further out than when you started. So just go back and forth to make sure you're just roughly in the same area. So these two are like bang on. It's really tedious, but I haven't found a proper way to, to do this without destroying the footage because you can use the built-in stabilization within Final Cut, but if you don't do this first, it's not gonna track that center point. So what I do is I bring it back in to Final Cut and then I put the stabilizer on it at a low setting. So everything here is fixed exactly on that statue where I wanted to pin it. So see it's pinned on the statue, but we have some black edges here. So before we fix the edges, we're going to need to go through again and fix the rotational element. And we can do this one of two ways. First way is to drag this up and down like this, or we can go in here and this is like fine tuning. So what I'm gonna do is kind of go through the images and see which ones are out of whack the most. So right here, I see a, a big discrepancy of the rotation. So I'm gonna change this one. So I'm gonna change this frame here so it is slightly negative. 
So I'm gonna click rotation. I'm gonna go negative point, say three. So it still, still needs a bit more, so I'm gonna go negative one and see what that looks like. So I'm gonna change the rotation here, go back to zero. The point here is to do very minimal, so I'm just scrubbing through to see which one is the most out. Flat, 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 flat. So I'm just scrubbing through again to see which frames are the biggest rotational errors. So these look pretty flat. This one is a little negative, so I'm gonna bring that up, 0.2. So that looks by far way better than what we started with. So the next step is to make this a compound clip. Hold Alt G, hit Enter, and we're gonna make this into a compound clip. The sides of the screen, compensating for the rotation on the position. So we have a flat image up here, but we've compensated by spinning the image and moving the position. So we're gonna have to get rid of these black shoulders. So what I do is I scan to the part where I noticed the most crop. So right here we see a... So we're gonna scale in until that is removed. So we're gonna go down here and look in the corner and we have scale selected. So we're gonna scale in until we don't see any crop. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna scale this in until we don't see any, any more crop down here. So we can zoom in, make sure we get everything. Scale, so right there it looks like. So right now it looks a lot better than what it did. So I'm happy with that. So what the next step is, we are going to export this because the program does not realize that we want to stabilize this again with the in program stabilization, but it thinks it's pictures, even though it's a compound clip. So we're just gonna export this as the best quality you can get. So when it's exported, go to import. We're gonna import the file we just made. So here it is here in a video file. We can see that stabilization has appeared because now the program knows that it's a video file. So now we can stabilize this a second time. So I'll just let this render. So there's three options of stabilization, automatic, inertia, and smooth. I've had the most luck with inertia. So I like the look of this inertia cam. So I like the look of the lower amount. So the next step, the final step is to export this again. So now you have, so now you have two rounds of stabilization. The first one is what we did earlier and that was all manual. And then we brought the exported .mov file back into Final Cut and put the Final Cut stabilizer on the file. So that's pretty much it for the video. Thanks for watching. So if you've liked the video, subscribe, hit the like button and hit the bell button to turn on notifications. Until next time, see you guys.